We're going to be talking about the bride and making herself ready, the gifts of the Spirit, people dreaming about babies and being younger, um, them also dreaming about superpowers and such like. But I want to start off in Ephesians 5.23. And this is to clear up things. It says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Okay, example, the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. So the wife, the church, and the body are all the same thing. It says it right here. For he is, the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Same thing as he is the head of the body, he is the savior of the body, he is the head of the wife, he is the savior of the wife. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. Okay. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. How does the wife make herself ready? Um... Wherefore, my brethren, ye are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Okay, you, you're becoming dead to the law. Now, the law was the works of the flesh. Um... It was trying to do things in our own power under the will of the flesh. There are the works of the Spirit which are different. I'm going to note that. But when Paul said we are dead to the law, it says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Okay, there are works of the Spirit we're not justified by the works of the law, but we are justified by faith, and faith without works is dead. Now, they're not normal works. They're works of faith. They're works of the Spirit. And, you know, a lot of people are professing that we don't do any works. Well, they're, they're fooling themselves. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? So we're buried with him by baptism into death. And there's more than one baptism we go through. It talks about this in Hebrews chapter 6, the doctrine of baptisms. It's plural, meaning more than one baptism. And it's not a water baptism. John said he come to baptize with water, but the one coming after him will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, speaking of Christ, Jesus. Okay, now, back to this. Therefore, you are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another. Okay, you're becoming dead. You're going through the baptisms of Christ, that you should be married to another. This is how the wife is making herself ready. Even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Now here's a, a thing right here. Bring forth fruit unto God also can mean, since you're married to Christ, you're bringing forth children unto God. A lot of you are having dreams, you're having babies, and you're younger. And that's partly because of having to do with repentance and the Spirit being poured out. Now, what kind of fruit you bear forth to God is how much you're giving yourself to God. Because you could be giving yourself to God but and bringing forth fruit unto Him, but how, how perfected is that fruit? You know, Jesus said there's some that hear the Word of God and some will bring forth 30, 60, and some a hundredfold. So, yes, it does... Uh, what you're... Um, take heed how you're here, for with what measure you meet, it should be measured to you again. Uh, I've done some other videos on this, about the Christ child, but I'm going to speak briefly on this. But it, you're, when you're bringing forth fruit unto God, it, some will bring forth something, some will bring forth mo more so, let me just skip ahead to, this will explain it. 
My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Paul's saying it too. I travail in birth again. That means he's going through the birth pains again until Christ be formed in you. See, Paul was an apostle and he had more of the full form of Christ in him and he was trying to get that to be birthed in them. They still had something of God in them, but they need to, they need to have the full form of Christ being formed in them. That's what I'm talking about is uh, the measure that you meet will be measured to you again. Um, so people are having dreams about being younger and bearing forth babies. And a lot of people are saying, well, it's the man child, it's the man child because they're dreaming about having men. But I've seen these dreams. I've seen where uh, people are bearing forth male and female children, but most of them don't really have to deal with it being the male child because the male child is the Christ child. That's the fully formed Christ in you. But not all are giving themselves to God uh, in the uh, that complete form. Some will. Um, and this all lines up with, uh, goes along with the, uh, um, when Jesus spoke of the days of Noah and also, woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Because they're, uh, they're bearing for something to God, but it's still in danger of being destroyed because how young they are. And then those who are teaching about he comes as a thief in the night, that this has to do with the rapture theory, and it, it doesn't. Um, it says, Then he which received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown. Well, first of all, he gave one out uh, talents to different, th to different uh, people. One received five talents, one received... Um, Let's see, one received five, to another two, to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Okay. There's gifts given out. And the Lord, you know, a lot of you have dreamed about Christmas, and or maybe even Santa Claus. I know that sounds like it's um, secular, but really, God's coming to pass out gifts. And depending on how you've been giving yourself to him. Just like bearing four children. People are dreaming about bearing four children. And how this relates to the thief in the night is very, it's very relative. Um, if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so blessed are those servants. Because he'll, and the Lord when he cometh shall find watching. Really I send to you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them that means he's going to feed them and it's not like okay the second watch or the third watch and find them so it's see i've had dreams where he's come in many of watches so it wasn't like he just chose one of the watches it, it was like he come at multiple different watches so at each of these times you need to be watching because he's passing out gifts but if you're not watching you're going to be cutting sunder and and this know that if the good men of the house had not known when the, what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not suffered his house to be broken through. At the same time, you can be blessed. You can also be destroyed because you weren't watching. And the, the reason why you can be destroyed is because you were going to be given something that would further you in the kingdom of God. But when you are left out in it, it's like you're missing a piece of... A note to the song, uh, a part of uh, the thing that would perfect you. Uh, it was a part of making you more full in Christ. Um, so how we get prepared is by the baptisms of Christ. We go through the baptisms, as it says in Hebrews chapter 6. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. See, you're not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. You're going to have living works. 
and you're not laying again the foundation of repentance. You're not going to be repenting from dead works because you're going to be doing works. And you're going to be leaving, you're going to be going further past, not just the, past uh, establishing the principles of the doctrine of Christ and then going further. Let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from not doing anything. And of faith toward God. And then it says of the doctrine of baptisms. Plural, more than one. And of laying on of hands. And of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this is partly, people are having dreams. I've just explained all the, about the, the talents and watching. And people bearing forth babies and them having them supernatural powers in their dreams. They're not supernatural powers that are not really, they're already listed. When they're dreaming about these supernatural powers, Paul spoke of them, uh, laying on of hands, raising the dead, casting out devils, speaking in tongues, healings, miracles, uh, you know, difference of, differences of administration. Um, these are just things that, you know, they're right here in the Word of God, but people take their dreams and stuff so far in the left field because their minds are carnal and they're not settled into the Word of God and they need to be. But I pray that this helps. God bless.